Today, I will demonstrate the real power of dividend investing, which is only revealed on a long time scale. That is the compounding effect of dividend reinvestment. Throughout the video, I'm going to illustrate this principle by modeling 35 years of investment. My name is Zach, and you should leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video. The reason why I'm sharing this is that new investors are often discouraged or frustrated by a lack of early results in their investments. This needs to be emphasized after a year like 2022 when the stock market has declined significantly. So through using multiple examples, I will show you how this snowball effect can be your path to financial independence and building generational wealth. To build out this model, I'm going to be using the sample statistics of one of the most popular dividend ETFs, SCHD. This fund tracks an index of stocks focused on the quality and sustainability of dividends. However, this is just one example of many different options that can be used. The real purpose is just to demonstrate this snowball effect at work. So I took the historical statistics of the fund and projected them forward over 35 years. The current stock price is $74.69 and the current annual dividend payment over the trailing 12 months is $2.56. For the expected growth rates, we will take a slightly more conservative outlook than its reality over the past decade. Let's put the compound annual growth rate of the dividend at 10% and the compound annual growth rate of the stock price also at 10%. First, let's look at how a one-time investment of $1,000 will perform over 35 years. In the end, we have a total value of $92.7,000 when reinvesting dividends and $32.3,000 when not reinvesting dividends. This is a massive difference of over $60,000 that makes over 65% of the total return from reinvesting dividends. It should be noted that although the total value is much lower, you would receive all earned dividends as cash. In totality, you earn $9.2,000 when you don't reinvest dividends, which is far from closing that gap in total value. When reinvesting dividends, you will actually earn far more total dividends. In this projection, you will earn $20.8 thousand total dollars in dividends. That's more than double. The reasoning for this is that you're buying more shares of the stock with your dividend, which increases your following dividend payment increasing the number of shares you can buy next, thus increasing your future payments even more, creating a snowball effect that compounds over time. For context, in year 35, you now own over 38 total shares, whereas if you didn't reinvest dividends, you'd only have the initial 13 shares you purchased. This has a massive impact. Not only is the value of your investment and its earning power increasing, but so is your ownership stake itself. This is so fundamental to understand. By the end of 35 years, if you reinvest your dividends, you will be receiving $2.4,000 in annual dividend income. That is a 246.21% dividend yield on cost. This dwarfs the $874 in annual dividend income from the model not reinvesting dividends. At this point, you can continue reinvesting your dividends and see even more massive growth than before or start taking out the payments as cash. Even if you choose to stop reinvesting, your payout will still continue to grow as the dividend is increased over time. So the earlier you can start investing and capitalize on this reinvestment time, the better your results will be. Time is the most important variable. So that's what would happen on a small scale if you just did a one-time investment of $1,000. But what would the results be if you had a more comprehensive investing strategy? Let's look at how investing $1,000 every month over 35 years will change the results. This means that over 35 years, you would have invested $420,000. By the end, we have $8.45 million when reinvesting dividends and $3.8 million when not reinvesting dividends. This is a crazy difference of $4.65 million between the two strategies. Now again, to be fair, you would receive $944,000 in total dividends during this time if you don't reinvest. This is nearly $3 million less in total value compared to if you had reinvested dividends. However, the most important factor is the dividend income that you'll be receiving. By the end of 35 years, you'll be receiving $224,000 in annual dividend income if you reinvested dividends. This is 53% of your $420,000 cost basis. That means you're more than doubling your money every two years from dividends alone. 
If you hadn't reinvested, then you would have $102,000 in annual dividend income, which is just under 25% of the cost basis. Once again, the longer you go through this process of dividend reinvestment, the better. You are continually using your income to increase your ownership stake and future dividend income. The snowball effect of dividend investing only gets stronger with time. This is why it's so important to start investing young and reinvest as long as possible. If you want to try out the projection model that I created for this video, then head over to my website DividendData.com. There is a free version available with the basics of the projection. If you become a DividendData.com member, then you can use the full model with all the graphs and data I showed throughout the video. It should be noted that a model is only as valuable as its inputs and this could all vary significantly in reality. Feel free to try it out along with all my other investing tools. Thank you for watching Dividend Data. I'd greatly appreciate if you could leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Every month you'll get a breakdown of my long-term dividend growth stock portfolio and every week get a video like this.